the problem that I'm having is the left thumbstick is gets stuck and if you can tell it's I don't know if you can but it's offset up into the left a little bit and it's just kind of stuck there and it doesn't come back into to position and it may be because um, if you look right here um, I think that something uh, has been either spilled or gotten onto this um, this thumbstick the ball joint that's down here at the bottom uh, and has maybe have gotten up and under it that's causing uh, the problem but when you're playing a game with this uh, you literally have to hold this thumbstick in the middle the entire time which is <laughs> very irritating but as you can tell um, this particular controller uh, has gotten very dirty uh, it's a my nine-year-old son's controller uh, before he eats and doesn't wipe his hands obviously before he uh, games uh, using the controller so uh, no big deal it's just the way it is that's uh you know I'd say it's a nine-year-old thing but I'm sure there's a lot of adults out there who do the same exact thing but anyway um, but there are uh, some screw points on here uh, you got one here 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 and here and uh, I, I bought this at Home Depot um, it's a Husky, and one reason that I like this is uh, they're interchangeable to uh, small Phillips heads and uh, also flathead. And another great feature uh, of this Husky uh, is it comes with several more uh, in here, and I will need the smallest one. Uh, one thing you don't want to do is strip these screws out, so make sure that you've got a good grip on these uh, before you start turning. That these controllers are not necessarily cheap. Now these screws are very small. That is, uh, that's the size of that screw. So if you drop it, it may be very difficult to find. Use a flathead to get just inside the the crevice right here and then as you put that right inside there you'll notice that as I separate it it will start to come undone and you may have to do that all the way around I can't believe I mean as I'm scraping around to uh, I'm starting to see just exactly why mine was um, probably having a problem coming apart but now these um, these triggers may start to fall out on you as you ease this apart. You don't want to force it too heavy. It could break on you. And there is something holding this together a lot more than I feel like it should. And remember how these pieces go in as you see them come out? Because they're going to need to fit in there just exactly the way that they came out. So, for instance, the, the triggers are going to be pretty pretty interesting to uh, to deal with. So you need to make sure that, that this piece um, is situated the way that it came out, which is going to be just like so. There we go. Now, it actually snaps apart. Um, and once it does, this back piece is going to come off. Okay? So it's the back you want to pull away, not the front. It's the back. Now that's the back side of the trigger. So when you get ready, this piece has to go down over the top of that. Just like so. And the reason being is because this is where that trigger resides okay now this is mashed down and that little rubber piece right there pushes in and it hits it hits this component 
that's on this little uh, plastic piece that's sticking off and that's that's what makes that work all right now this is the battery right here this is the battery and there's a little plastic housing as you can see where the battery attaches now this battery is attached right here and all I'm going to do is grab a hold and if you don't think you can get a hold of it you can get some needle nose but I'm gonna grab it with my fingernails just like so and pull that little plastic piece out alright so now I've pulled that out with my fingernails I'm gonna lay this to the side so as I look at this control panel I notice that there's a screw right here that I need to take out All right. this particular screw is is coming out really easily but it is um, even smaller than the other screws okay and there is uh, that's basically your controller right here this is your directional pad and these are your buttons your uh, square circle and triangle and X then you see where all these um, points that are on here actually hit on this uh, circuit okay so imagine I'm holding the controller so these points right here these little strips are my buttons so I don't know if it'll pop off or not but I'm gonna hope so alright so it does it just pulls straight off therefore with that pull straight off you can pull both of them off and then you can get your air can and you can blow out these components here just make sure you don't blow any of the uh, screws off the table is is pushed up and to the left some where this one is straight on this uh, thumbstick there that's the back plate look at all that trash A lot of it falls right out. Some of it won't. Some of it you have to literally blow out of there. But once again, make sure that you don't blow anything off the table. What I do here is I've taken um, this component apart from here, and I will be um, transplanting this old one which I was unable to get fixed because this uh, this left thumbstick is just sticking in the up position I can't do anything about it so I have another controller that had gone out and I've taken its base point uh, board, base board away and I'm going to attempt to integrate that back into this uh, controller here you just reverse engineer at this point and you just put piece by piece right back on top of each other and if you're not good at that don't ever attempt this <laughs> but with both of mine broken what do I have to lose right so hopefully that can help you out a little bit and um, maybe it'll work for me and like I said if it's broken you can't break it any further and it's already broken so if it works, you've got your controller back. If not, oh well.